Hello all, welcome to my channel Codify with Sonal. Today the topic that we will be covering is AWS Solution Architect Associate SAA C03 Real Time Exam Questions. So the, uh, this is not dumps as I have told you previously also. These are practice series which you can do it after understanding the concept of the exam or uh, concept of the services. So this is the part three. If you want to check out uh, the previous parts, uh, the link is down there in the description box as well as the playlist link is pinged in the I button above. So let's start for the questions today. A company observes an increase in EC2 cost in its most recent bill. The billing system notice uh, the billing team notices unwanted vertical scaling of instance types for a couple of EC2 instances. A solution architect needs to create a graph comparing the last two months of EC2 cost and perform an in-depth analysis to identify the root cause of the vertical scaling. How should the solution architect generate the information with the least operational overhead? I would give you some time to pause the video and understand the question well. Okay. So, uh, what does it? What the question is saying is that they want to generate a graph which can through which you can compare the last two months EC2 cost and also identify the root cause. Why? Because they are seeing some unwanted uh, uh, billing in the last two months after the they have done a vertical scaling of the instances. So they want to perform an in-depth analysis to understand what is the root cause. Okay, and they wanted with least operational overhead. Okay, so let's go with the options. Uh, AWS budgets to create a budget report and compare EC2 costs based on instance types. Uh, budget report would not generate graph. Okay, use cost explorers granular filtering feature to perform an in-depth analysis of EC2 cost based on instance types. So this is uh, yes one of the answer why you can use it because it provides you a proper graph and also you can view the data over 12 months okay use graphs from the aws billing cost uh, billing and cost management dashboard to compare ec2 cost based on instance types for the last two months here it is not exactly specifying where from the dashboard you are taking the graphs whereas for point b it is mentioning uh, granular filtering function okay so, uh, whenever you have uh, two close answers, try to find the one which goes more in detail, okay. Option D, uh, use AWS cost, cost and usage reports to create a report and send it to an S3 bucket. Use Amazon QuickSight with Amazon S3 as a, as a source to generate an interactive graph based on instance types. So, here uh, this can be done but... Uh, it is out of question over here why because it will require a lot of work and as you see in the question it they want least operational overhead focus on the key points as i always say least operational overhead you cannot have with this uh, formation okay so the correct answer to this is option b coming to the next question a company needs to review its aws cloud deployment to ensure that its amazon s3 buckets do not have unauthorized configuration changes what should a solutions architect do to accomplish this goal? Okay, so they have some unauthorized uh, configuration changes. Okay, so they want to review. Okay, so the keyword here is review. When you want to review, you should use AWS config. Okay, so you need turn on AWS config with appropriate rules. Trusted advisor. Trusted advisor is used when you want to provide important recommendations. You need some checks to be done. Inspector inspector scans for software vulnerabilities and network vulnerability issues, network reachability issues. Whereas S3 server access, logging, configuring, CloudWatch events or even bridge, that is out of point because uh, CloudWatch has nothing to do with your configurations. Okay. So the correct answer to this is AWS config with appropriate rules too. Next, a development team runs monthly resource intensive test on its general purpose RDS for MySQL DB instance with performance insights enabled. The testing lasts for 48 hours once a month and is the only process that uses database. The team wants to reduce the cost of running the test without reducing the compute and 
memory attributes of the TB instance. Which solution meets this requirements most effectively, most cost effectively? Okay, so make your key pointers here. Uh, the, they are doing some testing, okay, on the database which is an RDS MySQL DB instance, okay, and uh, the testing it goes only once in a month for 20, 48 hours. And this is the only process which uses the database. So it will uh, not, there are no other processes which will use the database. So if you want the database to only be used for 48 hours once a month, there's no point running the database for the entire month and having a huge amount of bill, right? So let's see what options we have. Stop the DB instance when tests are completed and restart the DB instance. If you do this, yet memory will be in use okay so it is not cost effective and the solution what we require is cost if, uh, cost effective solution we want okay so using auto scaling policy is also not a solution because here they are not talking about elasticity to require auto scaling okay then creating a snapshot when tests are complete terminate the db instance and restore the snapshot when required this is correct way of doing it okay you can uh, create the snapshot and uh, shift uh, you can uh, shift that to s3 and you can restore when needed then uh, modify the db instance to a low capacity instance when tests are completed modify the db instance again when required so uh, this can be done but uh, we need cost effective solution so no need to you know rerun the database again and again with modifying it because RDS uh, is already they have told that they want to reduce the cost of running. So if you again again modify things and try to run it, it is most more cost consuming. So the correct answer to this is create a snapshot. Okay. Next question: A company that hosts its web application on AWS uh, wants to ensure all EC2 instances, RDS, DB instances, and Redshift clusters are configured with tags. The company wants to minimize the effort of configuring and operating this check. What should a solution architect do to accomplish this? Now, what they want is they have some services, EC2 instances, DB instances, Redshift clusters, and they want everything to be configured with proper tags so that it is easy for usage. And the company wants to like minimize this effort, maybe a kind of trying to automate this, okay. So, uh, as we saw in our previous uh, question also, uh, in our previous questions that uh, to for tags config is the best way. So, you can use config rules to define and detect resources that are not properly tagged. So all other options here uh, we have already studied previously so I would not like to go in detail. So cost explorer we have already seen why it is used, API calls and all this is not for proper tag allocations okay. So if you have a, still have any doubt on this question please let me know in the comment box below. So let's go ahead. A development team needs to host a website that will be accessed by other teams. The website contents consist of HTML, CSS, client-side, JavaScript and images. Which method is the most cost effective for hosting the website? Come on, this you can answer. So, uh, it's a static website understood by the contents. Okay, static website S3. Okay, so this is a short, short question. Okay, so we have discussed a lot of things in this about static website in other videos. Okay. So let's go ahead. The correct answer is create an Amazon S3 bucket and host the website there. So next, uh, a company hosts its multi-tier architect multi-tier applications on AWS for compliance, governance, auditing, and security. The company must track configuration changes on its AWS resources and record a history of API calls made to these resources. What should a solution architect do to meet these changes? So to track configuration, we have seen what we should use AWS config and for tracking, uh, getting a record of history of API calls, you need cloud trail. Okay. So let's see where we have this an option. First option, use cloud trail to track configuration change. Here itself, it is wrong. 
you cannot use cloud trail for config changes you should use config for uh, tracking the config change configuration changes coming to the second one use config to track configuration changes correct and cloud trail to record api calls that what we were talking for now coming to the third point use aws config to track configuration changes correct and amazon cloudwatch to record api calls no you do not use cloudwatch to record api calls you use cloud trail okay last option uh, use aws cloud trail to track configuration changes no we have already seen this in the second point okay so the correct answer to this is second aws config to track configuration changes and aws cloud trail to record api calls coming to the next question a company is preparing to launch a public facing web application in the aws cloud the architecture consists of ec2 instances within a vpc behind an elb elastic load balancer a third party service make your points a third party service is used for the dns third party not route 53 uh, the company solution architect must recommend a solution to detect and protect against large scale ddos attacks ddos attacks which solution meets this requirements so ddos as you see ddos go towards aws shield okay this is a key note for you guys a ddos attacks equal to aws shield now we we see aws shield in two points c and d so uh, coming to the point c it says assign it to route 53 so now route 53 as i told you in the pointer that they are using a third party service they are not using amazon's route 53 so the correct answer to this is enable aws shield advanced and assign the elb to it okay next a company is hosting a static website on amazon s3 and is using amazon r route 53 for dns the website is experiencing increased demand from around the world the company must decrease latency for users who access the website which solution meets these requirements most cost effectively okay this we had discussed in our uh, cloud practitioner series if you any one of you is preparing for cloud practitioner do check out the cloud practitioner series also so in this we saw a uh, cloud front distribution is one service through which if you are if your website is being accessed from around the world it helps you enable uh, an origin point through which you have edge locations origin point there are a lot of pointers inside it okay we, i would not like to go in in detail of it but through cloud front distribution you can easily decrease the latency for users who are trying to access your website suppose i am in germany so i'll be able to easily access the website if i have an edge location marked in germany itself okay so this way things work for cloud front distribution okay so s3 static website with route 53 the best way to reduce the latency is cloud front distribution you see that in the third point okay add an amazon s uh, cloud front distribution in front of the s3 bucket edit the route 53 entries to point to the cloud front distribution okay next a company maintains a searchable repository of items on its website the data is stored in an rds for mysql database table that contains more than 10 million rows the database has 2 tb of general purpose ssd storage there are million of updates against this data million of updates against this data points every day through the company's website the company has noticed some insert operations insert operations again make a note are taking 10 seconds or lo longer the company has determined that the database storage performance is the problem which solution addresses this performance issues let's go to the options change the storage type to provisioned iops ssd good option it would give you better performance it talks about storage and better io so that's what it can give you then memory optimized uh, if you make it then there are the data is too huge okay it's 10 million rows so memory optimized not a point and uh, making it to a burstable performance here the problem is not uh, in compute here the problem is about storage okay then enable multi az rds read replicas they have already told that there is a problem in update there's a problem while insertions so making more read replicas not a solution okay so the correct answer to this is change the 
storage type to provision IOPS SSD. Coming to the next question, a company runs a highly available image processing application on EC2 instances in a single VPC. The EC2, the EC2 instances run inside several subnets across multi AZ. The EC2 instances do not communicate with each other. However, the EC2 instances can download images from S3 and upload images to S3 through a single NAT gateway. The company is concerned about data transfer changes. The most cost what is the most cost effective way for the company to avoid regional data transfers? Re regional data transfer charges. Okay. So now here to avoid regional uh, data transfer cost, if we deploy VPC gateway endpoint, then data will be transferred through AWS network only. Okay. It won't look for some third network through which we have lot of charges to pay. So the most cost effective way is to deploy a gateway VPC endpoint for S3. So that's it for today guys. Uh, if you have any doubts regarding these questions what we have discussed uh, today. So please let me know in the comment box below. And uh, if you are interested to know how should you plan your uh, certification, what courses you should refer. I have also uh, I have shared a strategy plan of how I prepared my uh, how I prepared for my certification. So I have pinned the video link in the i button above. You can check that out. And if I have already told regarding the cloud practitioner series, if anyone is interested, please check out the videos. So till then, uh, stay happy. Let's codify with Sonal in the next video. Please like, share and subscribe my channel. Do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you get a notification for the updated video. Thank you.